bring your positive opinions and your stuff and other things and make your contribution to the post HLG. Welcome back, kids and coaches. Stephen Crane here. We're going to talk about finals week. Now we're going to break this down from a fundamental standpoint over there. Okay, any good game plan has three main takeaways. You have Christmas break here. It's pretty nice. But then you had to come back to school. Then you kind of got to see your friends. Then you had midterms. But then spring break. Then COVID. Then the post. And now you're going to graduate. And it's all going to be okay. We all know the original plan was to go through graduation as per normal and have commencement on the 9th. Uh, but COVID had other plans. We're now doing a virtual graduation on the 9th, uh, courtesy of our PR department. They've been working tirelessly with our seniors to record videos and uh, send out some encouraging thoughts to UA. So, Facebook, 10 a.m. on the 9th. Check it out. This week we got to catch up with one of our December graduates. She left us with some encouraging thoughts and some words of advice for our May graduating class. She talked about, you know, stepping into the unknown and, you know, outside of your comfort zone. So my name is Sierra Brodicker. I graduated in December of 2019. Um, when I graduated, I moved to Springfield, Illinois. And I'm actually a in-home nanny and am getting ready to start my master's program in the fall. So. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Uh, what master's are you wanting to start? Um, I am going into uh, marriage and family counseling. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So since you've already experienced kind of life right after graduation and all that, um, what advice do you have for the seniors that are getting ready to graduate next month? Yeah, so for me, it was kind of a hard transition, you know, um, that's four years of your life that you spend in one place with uh, people your age who are experiencing the same things that you're experiencing. Um, and to leave that all behind and go out into the real world, or if you're like me, to a place where you don't really know anybody, you don't have friends around you, um, you don't have a home church. So it's, it's basically starting all over again, which is really scary. Um, but it's okay to grieve what you're leaving behind um, because that's a, essentially that's a part of your life that you are leaving behind. Um, but it's also okay to be excited about moving forward and um, to take what you've learned about when you first started over from leaving home to going to college and taking that into this next phase of leaving college and starting with this next um, part of your life. And so just being willing to put yourself out there, being willing to try new things. Um, it's okay to church hop. It's okay to um, you know, try to build community wherever you go. It's scary and it's hard, but you know, it takes time and that's okay. Absolutely. That's really good advice. I appreciate it. <laughs> so so uh, how have you been doing during this whole like COVID-19 stuff? <laughs> um, you know, some days are better than others. Um, I'm a really extroverted person. I feed off of being around other people, off of going out and doing things. And so um, being stuck inside is not ideal for me, but um, it's also given me a really good um, opportunity to um, get to know the family that I'm working with slash living with a lot better. Um, you know, essentially they're, they're my family now. And so, um, we've actually recently started like a health challenge. And so there's three adults, three kids. And so each kid is paired with an adult and you get points from like meals and exercise and reading, which has really, um, kept energy up, kept our spirits up because we hold each other accountable in that. Um, but also like I've had to get creative at finding new things to do with the girls, which has helped me um, not stay in bed and watch Netflix all day, but you know, get up and actually do things <laughs> with my life. But I, but I miss my friends. I miss being able to just go out and do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. If you can leave us or leave the seniors, I guess, with one little sentence of like a prompt or like a, a calling mission statement, whatever you want to call that. If you can leave us with that, what would that be? Um, wow. Uh, you know, one of my um, one of my favorite people to listen to and to learn from is Jill Briscoe. 
And she says that um, wherever your two feet are between them is where your mission field is. Um, and so that's what I would say is wherever you are, that's where your mission field is. And so as long as you are a believer in Christ, your mission it, or that is your ministry where you are like right there in that moment that is your ministry and so wherever you go wherever God takes you like use that you know like even if it's not what you thought you had planned for your life or you thought that you were going to be doing right in that moment you know God is still using you there and um, make that make that your mission field that's super cool that's awesome that's really good. Sierra thank you so much for um, spending time out of your day with us yeah, and yeah. um being willing to like give advice to the students coming after you. Thank you, yeah, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Speaking of getting out of your comfort zone, Mother's Day is coming up and a lot of you are not good at giving gifts. If you know a mom, have a mom, or even met a mom, you need to appreciate the moms in our life. So, you can't depend on your college student, so what are you gonna do? They can't bring anything home from school, so you have to make something, right? Go out and do it yourself. Since Mother's Day is so close and so many stores are closed, there's a lot of DIY options. Just go to Pinterest, search DIY Mother's Day gifts, and pick your favorite. That means do it yourself. Yes, do it yourself. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, <laughs> and if you want something simple, just hit From Kids, and lots of handprint crafts will come up. Now with shelter-in-place orders being lifted, and the first phase of it being, you know, out in the public, we now have an opportunity to hang out again. Not that I would do that, because I don't have any friends, but at least now I have a chance. This week we did an event on our Instagram page. We had numerous pictures taken across campus, and then we had students guess on the location of those pictures. The grand prize winner and the winner of the basket of HLGU gear is, drum roll please, Sarah Perrin. Congratulations. Even though we're looking forward to things returning to, you know, somewhat normal, we have learned quite a few things through this time of change that will move into the future. We got to sit down with Will Brantley this week and talk about what him and his admissions team are doing through this process. He's learned how to turn bunts into dingers. Mr. Brantley. Can... Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for meeting with us. Um, Hopefully we'll get to know you a little bit better through this interview and then get to kind of see like, what are you doing during this like time of unknown and what are you working on and what do you see for like our near future and stuff like that? Hey, I appreciate y'all kind of tackling this project. I think it'll be fun. I think it will be fun too. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself just so the audience can kind of get to know you. Like, what is your role at HLGU and the, like, what do you do there? Sure. So I'm Will Brantley. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment Management and Marketing. Uh, it's a big, long title that basically says uh, my job is to help recruit new students to our undergraduate programs, our adult degree completion, our graduate programs, um, and to lead the marketing efforts of the university. So I help kind of lead those teams and, and do those things to help move the university forward. Yeah, I see that uh, admissions spends a lot of time on a really good like social media post and they're doing a ton of zoom interviews. I think students, or at least prospective students from what I can tell really enjoy that interaction. They enjoy the engagement and uh, not to take any credit or give any credit, but like your team, you and your team are doing a great, great job. And I, I really appreciate the job you guys and the effort you guys are making. Well, I appreciate that. The, uh, the, the hard work is, is all done by our admissions counselors and enrollment counselors and, the undergraduate and the graduate and adult degree completion programs, they're, they're doing all the heavy lifting. So they deserve all the applause and praise, but they, they are spending a lot of time. Uh, we're encouraging prospective students to continue their college search from their couch. Um, since they can't come visit us in person right now, yeah. connect with us while you're sitting on your couch. And uh, we want to do that through social media. We're doing virtual visits, uh, trying to put some more stuff out there for them to to consume um, and connect with us as they have leisure. So we're just, we're trying to just move forward and do the next best thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are some positive things that you've seen, you know, come out of this, you know, time period that we're in? Um, some, yeah. what, is, what are some things that you really like that you've seen so far? Well, we, we actually had a student the other day who said, you know, she'd heard of Hannibal LaGrange University, but didn't know a whole lot about us. Uh, but one of her friends, um, either liked or shared one of our social media posts. And so she saw that 
and she liked what she saw. So she started scrolling through our Instagram account and then went and looked at our Facebook account and then went and looked at the university's Facebook and Instagram accounts and then got connected to the student life account. So she was doing some deep dives um, yeah. in all of our social media accounts because of one post. Um, and so she's actually ended up, um, she signed up for a virtual visit and has visited campus with our admissions counselor and met with a professor. And I believe that she's applying now. Um, that's so awesome. that's, that's one of the things like there's a lot of, uh, of unknowns in the world right now, especially if you read articles or pay too much attention about uh, trying to guess what the future is going to look like, um, specifically with higher ed and universities. And there's a lot of ranging opinions from doom and gloom to really positive. Uh, my just particular personality is to try to look for the positives and see opportunities um, instead of challenges. Absolutely. So I see a lot of opportunities that students have a lot of free time. Um, and so we're trying to give them more content and things that show them what um, Hannibal LaGrange University is all about. So uh, we're trying to do some more of that and we're seeing some real positive results from it. Students seem to really be enjoying their virtual visits, and I think we're doing a great job of that. Um, and so a lot of kudos goes to our faculty who are taking time in their day to sit down and meet with a student through Zoom or, or whatever platform they're using. Uh, you guys in student life are doing that with us as well. Our athletic coaches are doing that. So, I mean, it, it really is a campus-wide effort. It always has been, um, but this has just pulled us, I think, even though we're socially distant, it's pulled us closer together in realizing it takes a whole campus to recruit students. Um, and so what, one of the phrases I've been using with our team is, even though we're socially distant, we're not socially isolated. And so we yeah. want students to still see what that community is really like here. And that even though we're not physically together, we're still bound together. Yeah. yeah. That's really good, especially when you talk about mindset, um, looking at the positive and, and understanding that we're not isolated, we're just temporarily separated you know, physically. I think that's, that's really, really good. Yeah. Well, and it is, and you know, we are physically distant, but the community and the bonds, um, it's been really fun for me to watch what y'all are doing and then see our student life um, team and our students interacting that way uh, because they're, they're missing their friends. Just like, just like I miss my team being here. Uh, they miss being with their friends. And so I think that's one of the positives that's going to come out of this um, is that students, especially high school students are going to realize hey, that physical community is, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's going to actually propel higher ed and especially Christian higher ed forward in a way that um, maybe a, people were starting to kind of see the grass as greener and think about online and think about kind of easier paths to where they want to go. Um, I think it's going to help us by students seeing like, hey, these things are really important. Those things that we do really well that make us who we are I think students are, are longing for that right now. And so I think that's going to give us an, a great opportunity going forward um, to say, listen, those things you've missed out, that's what we do. That's who we are. Come be a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I have a question. So uh, coronavirus, no doubt, has pushed, I think, a lot of people out of their comfort zones, uh, do things that they never thought they could do, you know? And I think God's been good by you know, providing us with capabilities to do it, I guess. But um, have there been any things that HLG or your team specifically has learned that you might uh, carry on into normal life once this coronavirus gets over with? Yeah. So, you know, I quite honestly, you know, I've been doing enroll enrollment and admissions for a, a decade. Um, and I don't think I would have ever thought of the importance of visiting campus virtually like we're doing right now. Um, I think it's really important for people to be able to search the website, see kind of see some things on campus, see some videos. Um, but I think what we've learned is like, hey, listen, especially for those students who are really distant and it's hard for them to get to campus. This has forced us to make a way for them to visit campus that I think um, and our team's already talked about. We're going to keep that open even after we're back open um, over a certain distance. Like, yeah, this is an option. Let's do this. We, we figured out we can do it really well um, because I think beforehand we would go, oh, that's not really a great idea. It doesn't really connect them well to us. It doesn't allow them to explore the explore with people. And I think what we've seen is like, we can, it's not the same, but it's still a pretty good option. Um, and so I think that's one thing that you're going to see us continue to do is, is offering this virtual visit options. 
um, especially for students who are coming from a, a pretty good distance away. Um, and I would also say our social media stuff, um, that's, that's really important and we've known that's important. Um, but when you're in a smaller place with a smaller team, there's only so many hours in a day. Um, and so sometimes even important things get pushed down the list because there's just something that's more pressing. Um, I call it the tyranny of the urgent. Um, but I think this has helped us see like, listen, students are on social media and we've got to do a better job of that um, and, and providing good informational content, but fun content um, and just showing off who we are. Um, and so I think that's something you're going to see a, a, a more increased presence out of admissions. Um, it, it's forced us to focus on that instead of kind of going, we know it's important. Yeah. That's exactly kind of what I was asking. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, Michaela, do you have any other questions or any questions you want to ask before we well, I was getting ready to ask the exact same question that Paul asked um, <laughs> about like how, um, what you're doing now is going to transfer into the fall. Um, but also like throughout this time, there's obviously been a huge learning curve. Everybody either from transitioning to NC classes to online classes, or like you've said, um, face to face tours to virtual tours. Uh, but then just God is teaching us so much through this time of stillness and quietness. So what is something that you have learned that you are really as your big main takeaway from all of this right now? You know, the thing that, that's really given me a lot of comfort, and, and I've always been this way of, of knowing that, that God's in control and God's not surprised. He didn't, he didn't wake up on March 12th um, and go, wow, what's happening? Um, he knew well before I was even a thought of being a person uh, that this was going to be here with us. Um, and so it's, it's one of those things that you know, but maybe you're not forced to kind of sit in that and to really meditate on that and to really let that sink in. And I think for a lot of us, especially believers, it's really hopefully given us comfort um, that, that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, uh, but of love and of truth and of self-control and to know that he's not surprised. He's still on his throne. There's, going, there's always going to be a new challenge, uh, but with a new challenge brings a new opportunity. Um, and hopefully that helps us redefine um, and, and move forward in ways, not just in, in higher ed, but in our personal lives um, of realizing, you know, we don't have to just be connected to the people that are like right here around us. We can be connected with people at a distance in a very unique, but real way. Um, and I think there's, for me, there's always been that kind of pushback of like, hey, listen, if I'm not interacting with you face to face fairly often, is it really a real relationship? Mm. Um, and I think that this has forced us to go, you know what it is, and there's value in that. Uh, there's value in being face to face, but there's still value. We can still connect with each other. Um, it's, it's pushed churches to think about doing some things differently. Um, and, and I love our local churches all across the country. Um, but churches, just like higher ed, it's really hard to get something new going. Um, and so I think this has forced all of us in, in, in faith to say, we, we got we to gotta move into the 21st and 22nd century. We've got to think about how we utilize these tools for good without abandoning the good that is in tradition. Uh, but how can we integrate that? And I think that's going to translate, hopefully, in Christian higher ed as a whole to maybe how do we do this uh, educational thing where we really value face-to-face, -face, but maybe we've realized we can blend some technology in here. We can think outside the box. Um, and so I think that's going to be a real positive just overall in our, in our faith communities of churches and Christian higher ed to say we, we've learned to step out of our comfort zone. And how do we integrate both of these back together when we're able to come back to a kind of a normal of what we're used to? Yeah, right. definitely awesome. not going to take face to face for granted anymore, but very thankful for the technology we have because just writing letters would not, would not cut it right now. Yes. That's awesome. Um, Will, I just want to thank you personally and on behalf of Student Life and my team. Like, thank you for spending some time with us. Um, yeah. I think my big takeaway from this, you know, it's not, we're socially distant. We're not socially isolated. I'm really going to think about that and get, try to focus on that, you know, throughout the rest of my week. That, that was a really good tidbit of wisdom from you. Well, I appreciate y'all doing this. Thanks for, uh, thanks for doing it. And thanks for keeping our students connected to each other. No problem. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right. Y'all have a good day.
Thank you, Will, for reminding us that we may be separated, but we are not isolated. If you guys like this kind of stuff, like these posts, please let us know. Uh, like and subscribe to the page. And always, always share more positive opinion stuff and things with all your HLGU stuff. And uh, this is it until the summer.